Can praying the rosary really change lives? Yes, and today we have three amazing stories to show you why. Hi and welcome back. I'm Jennifer and this is Kate, the Catholic mom and daughter. And today in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary, we have three of our favorite rosary stories that we want to share with you. So October is the month of the Holy Rosary, and specifically October 7th is the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary, but a lot of Catholics don't know why that is. So today, of course, we're going to tell you, and this goes all the way back to October 7th, 1571, when the Muslim Turks were preparing to attack and move into take Rome and to take Europe. Right, the Muslim Turks wanted Europe very badly. They were trying to invade and they had their sights set on St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. It was still under construction, but they thought if they could get their hands on it, they would turn it into a mosque like they did with Hagia Sophia in the Holy Land. But of course, Pope Pius V was having none of that, thank you very much. So he called for the formation of a Holy League to fight the Turks, and he asked all of Europe to send men and ships to engage the Turkish fleet. So Germany, England, France, yeah, they weren't really bothered, but Spain and Venice did send men and ships to the Holy League, and the Pope personally picked the commander for the Holy League himself, and he chose Don John of Austria. Now, Don John is a very interesting man. For one, he was very young when the Pope picked him to lead the fleet. He was only 24 years old, but he was very intelligent. He spoke several languages, and it was known that he was devoted to Our Lady and a faithful sayer of the Rosary. And the Pope even went and asked Rome and the, and the surrounding areas to pray the rosary for the success of the battle. And the men prayed and fasted as well three days before the ships set sail. And before the ships left port, Pope Pius sent a priest onto every ship. He rounded up Dominicans and Franciscans and Trinitarians and Jesuits. He had them say mass aboard each ship and offer the men general absolution. But then Don John took it a step further. He had a rosary given to every single sailor on every single ship, and he had them pray it on their knees the night before the ships left port. In addition to that, one of the admirals in the fleet, Andrea Doria, had an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. It was a copy made from the original one in Mexico, and it had been given to the King of Spain, and the King of Spain gave it to Andrea Doria, and he took it on his warship. So Our Lady was all over that fleet. All right, so when the fleet finally set sail, they engaged with the Muslim warships at Lepanto in Greece, and things were not looking good for them at all. Like the wind was against them, it was foggy, but yet they were victorious that day. Our Lady really had a hand in this victory. She inspired Don John to try new military tactics that had never been done before. And even at the last minute, the wind shifted to favor the Christians. So they were able to deal the Turks a crushing blow. Now you have to understand, the Turkish fleet thought that they had this wrapped up. They had brought all their friends and treasure, and they were, they were planning their victory party before the battle even started. So this was a huge and stunning defeat for them, and it really spelled the beginning of the end of the Ottoman Empire. Yeah, and in another miraculous event, the Pope back in Rome on the day of the battle had been meeting with his advisors, and suddenly he got up and he went over to the window and stared out. And when he came back, he said that he had seen a vision and that the fleet had been victorious and that they should start celebrating. But in reality, the messenger who came with the news of the victory didn't actually arrive for two weeks later. So that's kind of crazy. Yeah, there was no CNN or a reporter live on the scene. So it's really interesting that Pope Pius knew about the victory two weeks before they got the official word. So after this incredible victory, Pope Pius declared October 7th the Feast of Our Lady of Victory, which was then later changed to the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. And October itself is considered the month of the Holy Rosary. And the first Sunday of the month is also called Rosary Sunday. And if that's not enough, 
For all of you literary fans out there, one of the sailors that fought at the Battle of Lepanto was actually Miguel Cervantes, who later went on to write Don Quixote. At the time of the battle, he was just another sailor, and he was actually quite sick on the day of the battle itself, and he was below decks with a high fever. So the captain of the ship told him, you know, you're sick, just stay below deck, it's fine. But he said, no, I want to fight for Our Lady. So he went on deck, he fought, he actually lost his left hand and his left arm was severely wounded with gunfire. And so he basically lost the whole use of his left arm after the battle. But even years later, when he was famous for writing Don Quixote, he liked to tell his family and friends that his biggest contribution to history was fighting for Our Lady at the Battle of Lepanto. So if you want more information on the battle, Chris Check from Catholic Answers did a great audio version of it that you can listen to for free. So we'll have a link down to that in the description. And this is just such an incredible story about how the Roseby literally changed history. So the next story that we have for you about the power of praying the rosary is one of my favorites and it's the story of Father Donald Calloway. Now maybe some of you have heard his story before, but a lot of the teenagers that I teach have not. And so I love to tell them his story because I always think it's so amazing. So what I do when I talk about him is I put up this picture of him on the screen during class. And then I ask the kids, I say, well, what can you tell me about this man by looking at him? And they'll say, oh, you know, he looks like a priest. He looks very holy. He looks all American. And I say, okay, great. So let me give you a list of four things about him. And you tell me which of these is true. So number one, he is a Catholic priest who is very devoted to the Blessed Mother and who has traveled all over the world talking about her, writing books about her. Number two, he was a member of the Japanese Mafia and as a teenager was deported from the country in leg shackles and handcuffs. Or number three, is it true that as a teenager he was a drug addict, in and out of rehab several times, in and out of jail several times? Could that be true? Or is it true that he's an expert surfer and enjoys surfing? Which of these do you think is really the true Donald Calloway? So as it turns out, all of these things are true. And Father Calloway grew up having a very troubled life. Um, and after one particularly hard time, he found a book on the Blessed Mother in his parents' house. And he just, on a whim, decided to read it. And he stayed up all night reading this book and he didn't even know who Mary was. Right, he had never heard of the Blessed Mother. He just said he picked up the book to see like, oh, what kind of religious cuckoo-ness are my parents involved in now? But he stayed up all night reading it and when his mom got up the next morning, he raced downstairs and told her, Mom, Mom, I have got to find a priest. I have got to talk to someone about what I just read. Now, of course, she was shocked but she did help him find a priest on the Navy base where they were living. And so he went to the chapel of, guess what, Our Lady of Victory that morning. And when he got to the chapel, there was a group of Filipino ladies in the chapel praying the rosary. <laughs> they didn't know who he was. I think this is my favorite part of the story, but they said, oh, young man. <laughs> Are you here to pray the rosary with us? Would you like to lead the next decade? And he said, oh my, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't know what a decade is. I don't know what the rosary is. Um, so that was the beginning of his conversion. And I just love that it all happened at the Our Lady of Victory Chapel. And over time, he became friends with these Filipino ladies. And it was actually one of them who suggested that he become a priest, which 10 years later he did. It's such a great story. He's written a book about it and he speaks about it. And I'll leave links down below to his book and a video. Um, so again, this is a great story to share if you have older kids, teenagers, because it's just, it just shows you the power of prayer. He's also speaking this month at the Marian Eucharistic Conference, which is being televised online. So that's a great place to catch up with him. All right, so our third and final story is the story of Blessed Bartolo Longo, who was an Italian in the late 1800s. Yeah, I love this story because 
It's hard to imagine a story crazier than Father Calloway's, but I think Blessed Bartolo has actually beat Father Calloway. So he grew up in a Catholic family, but eventually turned away from his faith when he went to college. At the time, Italy was swept up in this nationalistic movement and spiritualism was really popular. So when he went to college, Bartolo got involved in the spiritualism movement. He went to seances, he dabbled in the occult, and then he even took it all a step further and became a priest of Satan. <laughs> yeah, I don't even That's like to say that, to say. A priest of Satan. <laughs> So this life actually though, it really led him nowhere and he was very unhappy and that eventually led into depression and anxiety and he soon came to realize that he needed help. And with the help of a friend, he was steered towards a Dominican priest who helped him get his life back on track and come back to his faith and he even became a third order Dominican. And that's pretty amazing in and of itself, but the story doesn't end there. He was a lawyer by trade, and on a business trip to Pompeii, he looked around and he realized, you know, Pompeii is not a very holy city. The people are not going to church. They don't know the catechism. Everything is in shambles here. They're all going to seances. And then he realized, oh, wait a minute. I was one of the people who steered them away from church. I was a priest of Satan. Well, Satan never leave me. He thought that he could never break free of his past. It truly haunted him. And it got him so back down again that he even thought of taking his own life. But thankfully, he remembered that the Dominican priest had told him of Our Lady's promise to St. Dominic that anyone who helped promote the rosary would find salvation. And so he devoted his whole life to spreading the rosary, specifically in Pompeii. And he was behind the construction of the shrine of Our Lady of the Rosary of Pompeii. Which is a mouthful. Honestly. <laughs> okay, so I love the story of Bartolo Longo, especially because last year before the whole world shut down, my family was able to take a bucket list trip to Italy and visit Pompeii, which is a place that we've all wanted to see for a very long time. So when we were planning the trip, I thought, oh, you know, if we go to Pompeii, maybe we can go to the shrine of Our Lady of the Rosary. You know, maybe we can work that in, take a little pilgrimage. Well, yeah, of course, Our Lady was just laughing because when we got to Pompeii, we realized that the cathedral, or I guess it's a basilica, is literally within walking distance of the ruins of Pompeii. So after we toured Pompeii, we just walked over uh, to the basilica and I guess I was not prepared um, for what it would be like. We walked into the main square and the church is huge. And even though it was just, you know, an ordinary Tuesday afternoon in September, there was already a crowd of people outside waiting to get into the church. And then when you get in there, it is so incredibly beautiful. There are pictures all through the church of the different mysteries of the rosary, and it's just amazing to see. I couldn't believe like this man who used to be a priest of Satan <laughs> was the driving force behind this beautiful church that has brought so many people to the Rosary and to Our Lady. To me, that is a true miracle. All right, so there is our roundup of our three favorite stories about the Rosary and how it changes people and changes history. So thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed these stories and may Our Lady of the Rosary bless you and keep you safe and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.